Winter is coming, and now I remember why that's a good thing. Game of Thrones Season 3, Episode 3, Walk of Punishment. All right, in my reviews of the last two episodes, I've pretty much complained about how not a lot has actually been going on. I complained about some other stuff too, but honestly, most of that other stuff probably wouldn't bother me, except it stood out all the more because so little was happening. That's not the case this time. Now we're moving forward. The thing is, there isn't actually all that much more plot actually happening in this episode, but it's just presented so much better, and it feels like there's more going on. We've got a destination nation now. Seriously? Just one character saying, you know, to look out there, you'd never know there was a war going on. Just to have somebody acknowledge that, it went a long way to taking the curse off it. Some other highlights. Daenerys is in full-on, strong, growing leader mode, which means I like her this time. Tyrion becomes the royal accountant, and I'm going to be really interested to see how he takes this pretty menial looking position and turns it to his advantage because you know he's going to. That's what he does. Rob Stark feels more like a king and a leader than ever before and that's just because of one scene where all he does is chew out his cousin. Finally, the woman in red is actually intriguing to me in this one. She's kind of annoyed me up to this point, because, partly because of her being the embodiment of magic becoming more prominent in the show, which I talked about before, but also because she's just the, sort of that generic background cultist figure it's I just feel like I've seen that sort of mysterious person pulling the string so often that I'm bored with her except this time just little little nuances in the performance she feels more human than she has up to this point the White Walkers feel really ominous and you feel their presence and they don't even show up in this episode and Jamie Lannister gets some great material. The more this guy gets backed into the corner, the more I enjoy watching him. It just feels like everything's back on track and we're back in form now. That said, there's a couple of little things that are still bugging me. The sexual aspects of the show, they bother me a little bit in this episode. I haven't talked about it before up to this point because it's just kind of there. It's part of the show at this point. Now, the sex position, as it started out in the first season, I thought was actually really clever. That's a, that's a pretty nifty way to jazz up an exposition scene. Cool! In the second season, it felt like they selected when they were going to get more sexually explicit pretty carefully, or at least that's my memory of it, so that worked pretty well. This time, it feels more like they're doing it because it's just an established trope of the show and it's just kind of just kind of thrown in there. And it's not bad, but it, it's not feeling as organic. It's feeling a little more forced at this point. It's, I'm not just talking about the nudity. The subject of rape gets brought up quite a bit in this episode, and it's to a degree that I'm actually sort of skeeving a little bit. And maybe that's a good thing. I should be skeeved by rape, but it's, it's making me uncomfortable just as a viewer. I'm like, should I even be watching this? And of the number of times rape gets introduced across a number of different stories, there was really only one time where I was like, okay, I get why that's there. I'm not enjoying it, but I understand why it's there. The rest of the times, it was it was kind of gratuitous. Even though all this rape talk did set up that brilliant line, there's a beast in every man that stirs when you put a sword in his hand. That's a fantastic line. I, I'm just not sure it was worth it. The other thing, and then this has kind of been a, the case of the show all along, is we get a, we get quite a few new characters introduced, and they just sort of show up. They just kind of appear, and the show expects you to get who they are and where they fit into all of this and just move forward with the whole thing. And I, I respect the show for having high enough expectations of our of its audience that we're just going to be able to grab it and go, but sometimes I, I wouldn't mind a little hand-holding on this. Really, I should be used to it by now, but I had to keep backing up and going, wait, you, who are you again? And you're related to who? How? And have we seen you before? I can't remember. Like that, I would have to look up. Somebody would show up and I'd be like, am I supposed to recognize you from earlier because I don't, or are you just new? Minor quimbles aside, this is the show as I remember it and as I remember loving it, so it's great just to see it back in form. Thankfully, as I hope, those first two episodes, we laid the foundation, now they're actually building something on it. Oh! This episode serves as a nice reminder that nobody does holy crap closing moments to an episode like Game of Thrones does. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. And until next time, this council is adjourned.